I reached the second floor landing and hurried down the narrow hallway and into my new room. Wow, I said aloud, and the word echoed faintly against the empty walls. It was so big, and I loved the bay window with the window seat. I walked over to it and peered out. Through the trees, I could see our car in the driveway, and beyond it, a house that looked a lot like ours across the street. I was heading to the door, thinking about which posters I wanted to bring with me, when I saw the boy. He stood in the doorway for just a second, and then he turned and disappeared down the hall. Josh? I cried. Hey, come look! With a shock, I realized it wasn't Josh. For one thing, the boy had blonde hair. Hey! I cried and ran to the hallway, stopping just outside my bedroom door, looking both ways. Who's here? But the long hall was empty. All the doors closed. Whoa, Amanda, I said aloud. Was I seeing things? Greetings, Internet, and welcome to Bookworm's Goosebumps Retrospective. Today, we look at the very first book of the series with Welcome to Dead House. Amanda and Josh are not happy they have to move to a new house in Dark Falls. But the parents make them, for their recently passed great uncle left the house for them for free. Amanda starts to take a liking to the house, until she begins to notice strange things going on. Whispers in her bedroom, curtains flowing while the window is closed, and seeing people who are not her family inside the house. Leading to a dark and terrible secret of Dark Falls that may lead to their death. Welcome to Dead House is, of course, the first Goosebumps book, and it's a mixed bag. This is a classic ghost story that at times works really well. There are many well-paced, well-executed scares that build up throughout the book. Dark Falls has a feel all its own, a feeling of dread, that something is not right, that something is dead, making you wonder what the dark truth is behind Dark Falls. What fails for me is the dark truth, or rather how it is executed. It's rushed. We do get answers, but there isn't any development to the answers. We get an explanation and then off to the next plot point. It's like you are given a puzzle, but you are missing a few pieces to complete the full picture. On top of that, the ending is not one of the best. It's confusing and rushes by so fast you don't get the time to digest the info. I felt like I was missing something by the end and it left me disappointed. If things were explained or developed more, it could be a lot better. You guys are going to be hearing me say this a lot about several of the books because it's an unfortunate flaw within the series. However, it does set up the style of writing for the series and like I said, it features many of its trademark scares. Plus, I have always seen this as the gateway book. If I were a kid when this came out, it would have had my attention. I mean, look at this house. The open door, the haunted house look, and the strange figure along with the tagline, it will just kill you. But knowing there are so many other books that do it much better lessens this one overall. Only read it for it being the first, or if you're looking for an okay ghost story. What about you, Internet? What's your opinion? Till next time. Have a scary day.